Here's a question for you. Which is the more important part of a split system, the condensing unit or the indoor evaporator coil? Actually, it may be the same as asking whether the chicken or the egg is more important. But don't answer the question yet, because on today's Dare to Compare Tour, we're taking a look at some exciting new developments in the world of evaporator coils and air handlers. Joining me now is Ron Winger. Hi, Ron, how are Hi, you? Mark. Hey, hey, good to see you. It's good to have you here today. Ron, I've told everyone that exciting things are happening here. Do you agree? Yes, sir. This is the place to make it happen. We're all about quality, cost, and delivery. We want to have the best value of product for the marketplace. Well, great. I can't wait to see it. Where are we going to start first? Well, let's start down here in the copper side. Okay. Great. Let's go. All right, Ron. We're standing here in between a couple of machines. What do these machines do? These two machines here are called hairpin vendors. They make this copper tube that we call a hairpin. So yeah, it looks like a giant hairpin, doesn't yeah, it? That's what it is. It wouldn't work in your and my hair, but what's important here is that the overall length from end to end is perfect. You can't live with having uh, steps in the ends. They've got to be even. We don't want wrinkles down here in the end of this bend either. The whole idea is to start this process off with very consistent, high quality so that when we get down into the rest of the process, we don't end up with leaks. And it sounds like the important thing to take away from this is attention to the quality. It's all about quality, cost, and delivery. Great. Well, what's the next step here? The next step is down here where the pin press is on. Let's go. All right, Ron. Well, here we are in front of one of the loudest machines I think I've ever experienced. So, uh, could you tell me a little bit about it? We've got several fin presses here, and when they're all running, as you can tell, it's pretty noisy. Yeah, it's real noisy. What we're doing here is we're stamping the holes for the hairpins go in, and you see that each one of these holes has a collar on it, and that's how it separates the fins so they don't stack right down on top of each other. It's also got some loops in it, and that increases the efficiency of the hairpin. But we make fins that instead of this 14 inch here, it could be 18, 20, 24, 28 inches long. This is a two row fin. We, we make the three row and the four row. It's whatever the design calls for. All right, well, let's go take a look at the next step. All right, if I'm not mistaken, this is an expander machine. Is that correct? You got it. This uh, machine, what it does is it expands the copper tube, the hairpin, out to the fin. You can see that we're putting a flare on the top, but what we've done is we've expanded this copper tube out to the fin so that we get the heat transfer. It's made it just as solid as a rock. Okay, where do we go next? We're going to go to the auto brake. I'm ready to see it. All right, it looks like we're here at the next step in the production of a quality coil. Now, this is the auto brazier, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the auto brazier plays an important function in making a leak-free coil for the units. You notice on this return band, there's a, a ring. That's a braze ring, and it's a phosphopy ring. And as it goes through the fire over there, it melts, and it makes a leak-free joint. As the coil goes around the corner over there, we're going to see where they're putting the nitrogen in to clean out the moisture and the oxygen that's in there so we get a real clean joint on the inside. And then we braze it with gas flux. It kind of makes the uh, natural gas flame, changes it from a blue to a green. And then it just shields it and this copper comes out without any scale. It makes a really uh, nice leak free joint. It comes out perfect and it's ready to go to assembly, right? That's right. It's all about quality. This is one of our main lines that we build the evaporator coils. And this is the copper assembly side. And it starts at the front here, and there's a lot of activity. This is kind of like Grand Central Station right, right this here. This is the busiest place yeah. I've seen so far. We start with putting the coil that we just saw being brazed back in the auto braze. We start assembling the sheet metal that we stamped here. We don't buy it, we stamp it. And if you notice here, there's a little barcode. And right. That a sticker on the bottom of each one of those. We put that barcode sticker on so that as we go down through the quality checks that we link all those tests into that serial number. We've done what we consider a high quality, leak-free product. Well, Mark, that's how we assemble it. There's a lot of detail 
And uh, the next step is the pressure decay. I'd like to show you that. You find that to be Okay, let's do it. Okay. Well, here we are at the pressure decay. This is the first step in the quality check. And the whole idea is that from here on that there's no leak in any of the braze joints, whether it's from the return bends at the auto braze or there where we made the manifold or where they braze the manifolds into the coil. So what the pressure gay is doing, it's kind of a gross leak check. And what we're going to do here is satisfy the UL requirement to test to the 480 PSI. Right. Then we hit it with a little vacuum and then we charge it back up with a 50-50 mix of nitrogen and R410A. Okay. We charge that up to about 180 PSI and then it goes on down the line to the next leak check and that one would be the Infocom station here. Now, Mark, here we are in the Infocon booth and you can tell this is pressurized and right. we're trying to keep the atmosphere in here where no refrigerant can mess up the leak test. And it looks like that she's testing each individual joint, is that correct? One joint at a time. Wow. So she's got to heat each one and the Infocon is very sensitive. It'll catch down to a one-tenth ounce leak per year. So it's a great piece of equipment so anybody like me could just come in, I could start testing them for you, right? Well, she's been trained, she's very good. If we had you doing it, I'd probably have her come in back behind you. Oh, you me. wouldn't trust me, huh? Yeah, well, I didn't say I didn't trust you. But you'd Just have not to, go to test your products. You'd have to go through some apprentices. You're a wise man. Well, Ron, this looks like a really productive area. Can you tell me some more about it? Well, this is where really all the subassembly stuff comes together. From the wing bender behind us, it starts all coming together with these insulated parts, the coil coming out of the Inficon, and then we've got these operators here shooting screws to assemble it all together. And one thing I want to point out to you here is this label here with the barcode, if it hasn't passed all the quality checks back there, it's not going to print that out when the fellow up the line here scans it. And then again, if it hadn't passed here, it's not going to print out the label that goes on the box. And tell me about this device you have down here that makes it easier on your guys to load this up and stack them up. They're putting the unit into the box with the styrofoam to protect it during shipping. We put them on horizontally, and then we have an upender that upends that stack so that we can stretch wrap it. It works pretty well. Great. Well, Mark, we're just about to get to uh, line C, which is the uh, world's most productive air handler assembly line. We make it happen here. So they assemble the entire unit right here between these two walls, this small space. That's correct. Wow. And we do everything. All the sub-assembly work gets done right here on this line. And we build the coil at the front of the line, do the full leak test. We bend the wrapper. We insulate it. We start assembling. And it just goes down the line. Well, I can see why you call it the most productive. These guys just move so fast. Every person on this team knows their job and they have a certain amount of time to get it done and they all work together to make it happen to build the best quality unit. So what kind of testing do you do on the unit? Well that's next uh, and we do a very thorough test job so let's go over and take a look at that. Let's do it. Well, Mark here we are at the run test, one of the more important stations on this assembly line. One of the first things that the operator is going to do here is check the pressure of the unit to verify that something didn't happen coming down the line before we get it into the box over here. Then the operator is going to plug in the electrical and we're going to go through the full gamut of a test. We're going to do the high pot, we're going to test out the heater, we're going to hook up the motor, and we've got some very tight band of acceptance ranges for all these tests. Assuming that it passes all those tests, then it's going to print out a label that is the indicator for the field. Hey, this thing's been through 100% test. The next step there is the operator puts on the uh, top cover and that operator will scan that tracker label again to print out the boxing label. But once it passes that test, you box it up, it's ready to ship off. That's correct. Hey, Ron, I got to tell you, this really is the most productive line I've ever seen. Thanks so much for the tour. It was better than I imagined. Thanks for coming. To many people, evaporator coils and air handlers are just the basic components of a split system. But to the folks here, the number one goal is to manufacture the industry's best products, and their dedication shows. But don't take my word for it. Schedule a Dare to Compare tour today.